Hey guys, and welcome back to another Valorant video. In this one, I want to cover the patch notes as well as the new agent leak. I don't know how episode three just dropped and we have leaks for the next agent, but that's that's how things go. Um, I'm going to cover the agent first because it's just a few little leaks to keep you guys informed, and then we'll move on to the patch notes. One thing I want to say is that check the description down below or the pinned comment. I'll be streaming sometime today, probably around 1 to 2 p.m. EST, giving away some Valorant points. I don't know how much and just chilling, making some viewer games so you guys can be in some YouTube videos with me on the stream. And yeah, make sure to check it out and let's get started. Straight into the video. Before we get into the patch notes, I want to quickly cover the leak for Deadeye because it's not much to go off of and I just want to mention it. Um, the source string was found, Deadeye, it is in the code. We do have some uh, speculation of how he looks because of the latest one year trailer that Riot posted on their uh, on their um, channel. As you can see right here, we have these like papers in the back. This is a screenshot directly. And then we have a few other pictures that are a lot more clear. We have this, these inverted ones. This is the first one. This is the second one. This is a zoom in on his face. And someone on Twitter actually inverted the colors, giving us a much better look at uh, how Deadeye looks. He looks super sick. And honestly, um, the only thing that's weird is he's holding his like own gun. I wonder if his alt will be his own gun, kind of like how Jin is in League of Legends. Um, his name is Deadeye, so it's going to be something aim related. I definitely wonder how, how this guy will play out. I have a lot of speculation in my head, but instead of filling you guys with mumbo jumbos, I'll probably make a separate video speculating about Deadeye when there is more leaks. For now, we know how he looks. We know his code name. He looks pretty sick, but yeah, let's get in, in, straight into the patch notes now. That's more, a little bit more important, a little bit more juicy. Let's start with the agent updates and uh, first of all we have a change to every single agent with their signature abilities now only being provided a minimum of one charge per round instead of accumulating a charge every round. For example if you have a two charge signature ability and you end the round with one charge remaining you will not gain an additional charge for the next round. Charges gained from cooldowns are now always temporary. Visibility returns faster during the fade out period of all flashes. So that's just separate from the charges. Uh, it's the weird, the, the way they formatted it is a little bit weird. So visibility returns faster during a fade out period of all flashes. So that little animation from after the flash when it fades back into vision is just a lot snappier across the board. Now getting into specifics, let's start with our girl Astra here. Nova Pulse, her Q. Cooldown time increased from 12 to 25. 12 to 25 oh my god uh, gravity well cooldown time increased from 12 to 25 straight up doubling the amount of like she's yikes um stars astral form which is her x stars are now inactive when placed during the buy phase when the barriers drop her stars charge for 1.4 seconds and become and become active and usable on attack Astra can now see the spikes location in astral form. This representation does not animate, so we will not provide additional info on the status of the spike. Recall cooldown increased from 8 to 15. Granted, signature charges decrease 2 to 1, and star cost decreased from 200 to 150. So, yeah. They just slapped Astra extremely hard. I mean, you can now at least see the spike so you can ping it more accurately, but that's only, of course, on attacker side. So I don't know how much, how useful that really is. Everything else is just a uh, straight smackdown. Just, just a yikes. Like, I feel bad for Astra. But yeah, let's move on to Breach. Ooh, so uh, the introduction of KO warrants a turning pass on our other initiators. So, uh... Time to see what they do. Flashpoint Q, total charges reduced from 3 to 2. Cost increased from 200 to 250. Projectile speed increased from 2,000... Oh, sorry, decreased. My bad. Projectile speed decreased from 2,500 to 2,000. So the flash actually initiates or like gets sent to the wall a lot slower. I didn't notice that. His uh, fault line, which is his E, his full charge time decreased from 1.5 to 1 second. So luckily his fault line comes out a lot faster. The width was increased from 600 to 750. The telegraph windup time was decreased from 1.3 to 1. Concussion dur uh, duration increased from 3 to 3.5. Unequipped time after firing decreased from 1 to 0.7. And cooldown time increased from 35 to 40. So you have to wait an extra 5 seconds, but you get a fault line that's, of course, a lot snappier, a lot bigger, a lot faster. So it's like, fault line, of course, is just way better now. And it was already a great ability. So I'm glad they tuned him this way since his flash got smacked pretty hard. His aftershock was also changed quite substantially. 
It now explodes 3 times with each blast dealing 60 damage with no fall off. Blasts are 0.6 seconds apart, so no more one shotting, but you have more zone control. Explosion radius increase from 260 to 300. Unequipped time after firing decrease from 1.1 to 0.9. Cost increase from 100 to 200. So yeah, they are doubling the cost and changing its purpose. Covers more area, comes out way faster, and is used as zone control. That's just a fact. Rolling Thunder, his uh, alt now width of all explosion increased to 2300, which was previous the width of the final explosion. So you know how it started small and slowly went big? It's now a big cube completely covering areas. Like it literally destroys sites. I'm, I like the changes to Breach, but I'm not a Breach main, so you guys can let me know down below. Brimstone. Brimstone just had his Q uh, changed. His cost was increased from 200 to 250. Cypher um, uh, actually got a small buff. His ultimate points required decreased from 7 to 6, so at least they did something for my boy Cypher. He's in dire need of a little more help in my opinion, at least in our ranks. Maybe in the high ranks he's fine, but eh. Now let's talk about Jet. <laughs> Oh, Jet, okay. Um, first of all, we've reverted the Jet Cypher tripwire interaction. When we find, when we initially made this change, there was a strong sentiment about Jet feeling weak and Cypher feeling oppressive, but things have changed, blah, blah, blah. So now when you dash through a tripwire, you get stuck again. You don't break the tripwire. Updraft, her Q, cost increased from 100 to 150. Tailwind, her E, no longer breaks Cypher's trapwire. Cloudburst, C, cost increased from 100 to 200. Rip, rip, rip. Bladestorm, which is her alt, increased from 6 to 7. I like I like these changes for the most part. Just don't love Cloudburst one. Ugh, nasty. Okay. Killjoy, her alarm bot cooldown after picking up ink. Holy sh... Jeez. Jeez, her cooldown after pickup increased from 7 to 20. So moving, al moving your alarm bot around is going to be... A yikes. Damn, that's actually huge. Turret E, cooldown after picking up, increased from 10 to 20. So moving your uh, abilities around is going to be extremely slow. And I guess this is to push keeping your abilities on one site. A little bit unfortunate for rotations, but uh, yeah, I didn't think they were going to nerf Killjoy considering KO is already a nasty counter to her. That's uh, That's unfortunate. Omen, paranoia, <laughs> you know what I noticed when I'm reading these patch notes, everything is just unfortunate, but yeah. Omen, paranoia increased, or no, decreased from 400 to 300. Dark cover E, granted signature charges reduced from 2 to 1, that's across the board. Omen must now buy his second smoke for 100. Cooldown time increased, uh, increased from 35 to 40. Shrouded step cost is increased from 100 to 150. Um... Curveball, which is the Q, cost increase from 200 to 250. Uh, raise uh, the, oh, the model update. Model has been updated with a polish pass. I did not know they updated her model. Boombot C, increased from 200 to 400, straight up doubling the price here. Ultimate points increased from 7 to 8. Reina, her Leer, her cost increase from 200 to 250. Sage, slow orb, cost increase from 100 to 200. Barrier orb, which is the C, cost increase from 300 to 400. And the resurrection, um, ultimate increased uh, required from 7 to 8. Sorry, I slurred my words there a little. But yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised that they're nerfing Sage. Like, n further nerfing Sage is a little bit of a, a little bit interesting. But uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's keep going. Sky. Sky will lose her third flash charge, but she'll now regain charges on a cooldown for her signature. So, um, basically, what's interesting about this is Trailblazer Q, vision radius increased from 1750 to 225, sorry, 2250, so you can see much further. The max concussion duration increased from 3 to 4, and cost has been increased from 200 to 250. So, for 50 extra credits, you're honestly getting a lot more for your buck. I think this is a great change to Sky. Her guiding light, the charges were redu reduced from 3 to 2. Charges are now replenished on a 40 second cooldown. Sky no longer needs to re-equip to trigger her flash. And guiding light's projectile now goes around corners tighter when free flying and is more responsive to guiding. The audio when casted is reduced from 3250 to 1250 and the cost of charges increased from 100 to 250. So huge price increase but uh pretty uh pretty interesting this guy's gonna play a little bit tighter though so we'll see we'll see how things go there
Silva. Silva's shock dart has increased from 100 to 150. His recon vault uh, cooldown was increased from 35 to 40. His owl drone is increased from 300 to 400. And his hunter's fury required increased from 7 to 8. Now, Viper's next. Snake bite. Her C. Duration reduced from 8 to 6.5. Outer edges of Viper's Acid Patch form faster to ensure it is lethal if any enemy sits in the entire duration. Cost increased 100 to 200, and we've seen a massive resurgence in Viper's popularity and power, especially at stalling opponents and preventing defuses. We hope to slightly reduce some of this stalling power. This makes a lot of sense. Next, we have Yoru. So Yoru is pretty interesting. We were told he's going to get a buff, and then they made his flash cost more, which is, you know, we kind of saw that, but then he made, they made his great gate crash cooldown increase from 35 to 40. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting. It's only five seconds, so it's probably okay, but I think Yoru buffs are still coming in the future, but yeah. Time to move on to the weapon updates. We're 10 minutes deep and we're not even done. Oh my god, this patch. Okay. Weapon updates. Since the launch, run and gun has been a hot topic. While we believe that there are certain situations that moving and shooting should be powerful, it is currently more potent than we'd like. This patch targets a piece of the puzzle that hasn't been touched before, which is what we call tag into accuracy, which is something I mentioned to you guys before. Of course, you guys can read the patch notes more specifically, but we've talked about this. They're nerfing it, and this is exactly what they're nerfing. All the weapons across the board. Bullet tagging changed from 75% slow to 72.5% slow. Tagging is the slowing effect you feel when hit by bullets. So you get slowed a little bit less, but it's not that substantial. Weapon dead zones changed from 30% to 27.5%. Dead zone in Valorant refers to the movement speed a player becomes inaccurate. This, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought it'd be a little more aggressive. Than 27.5 but still we have to play it to understand how that how that feels because something small could feel bigger than it seems on paper all rifles um, across the board walking inaccuracy changed from 1.3 to 2.0 running unchanged at 5.0 so rifles are still like they're worse like like the walking accuracy is a lot worse but it seems the running is unchanged so those unlucky headshots will probably still pull through all heavies, walking and accuracy changed from 0.5 to 2.4, holy, and running unchanged at 6. All SMGs, walking and accuracy changed from 0.3 to 1.0, that's pretty huge for SMGs, but I'm really happy because I don't like the running and gunning SMGs. Running and accuracy was also changed from 2.0 to 2.5, damn. SMGs are definitely more uh, inaccurate. The classic, the classic, walking and accuracy changed from 0.25 to 0.84. And running and actually changed from 1.5 to 2.5. Damn, they nerfed the classic even more. I already felt it wasn't that great. I mean, the right click still comes through, but I mean, I guess this is more and more uh, pushing you away from the classic. It is a free gun, so I can't say much. The Frenzy. Price decreased from 500 to 450. Walking and accuracy changed from 0.25 to 0.8. Running and accuracy changed from 1.0 to 2.0. For the ghosts, we have walking and accuracy changed from 0.25 to 0.92, and the running and accuracy changed from 1.85 to 2.3. Damn, the ghost as well. That one kind of makes sense because there's a lot of people wide swinging headshotting when they didn't stop moving. I'm not completely. Damn, this is big numbers though across the board. I actually thought like the rifles would get it harder, but nah. Even the sheriff, 0.25 to 1.2, and running 2.0 to 3.0. Holy. God damn, that's crazy. The judge, who poor, poor judge. Price increased from 1600 to 1850, so you gotta cough up some more money. But the damage fall off at 10 meters changed from 13 per, per pellet to 10 per pellet. The damage fall off at 15 meters changed from 10 per pellet to 7 per pellet. So, yeah, we want the judge to be devastating. Multi fragging, close range option, and believe it's a bit more premium than we had previously given it credit for. It was also performing better than expected at a range, so we're also taking that down a notch. So, I think this is fine. They're just making it much closer. I think the judge is still great, but more back to its intended purposes. Swing a corner, keep him close. You're still going to destroy people. I mean, damage fall off from like 10 meter range change. 10 meters and 15 meters is like. That's pretty far for a shotgun, you know? I think this is this is healthy. I just don't know if it was warranted with that pretty substantial price increase. I wonder if 1700 would have been better or something like that, but Riot's playing with it, so we'll see. Next, we have the Bulldog. So the hip fire, the full auto mode fire rate, increased from 
15 to 9.5. Oh, I got hyped. I thought it'd be a much bigger increase. Small increase to the full auto mode. And then the price was de decreased as well. So it is a buff to the Bulldog all around. The Bulldog was feeling just slightly underpowered in close mid-range situations where the hip fire was the go-to. So we're giving it a bit more of, uh, of a firing rate to complete the lowering of the price to hopefully make it a more enticing buy. I don't think so, but it is what it is. The shorty price decreased from 200 to 150. The Stinger, 1100 to 950. Bucky, 900 to 850. Marshall, 1950. Aries, 1600 to 1550. Operator from 5000 to 4700. Kind of wanted to speed run these because I've already covered all the gun changes. So yeah, we also have some competitive updates. Damn. So uh, I'm just going to summarize these. We want winning games to matter most at all skill levels. We want to improve individual and performance evaluation because we believe it helps identify more fair and balanced matches. We want you to see their rank as an accurate representation of your current skill level. We want you to have fewer motivations for playing on different accounts to get to their proper rank faster. So we reduce the possibility of... <laughs> We reduce the possibility of feeling hard stuck on older accounts. If your skill improves, your rank should properly reflect that regardless of account age. That's hilarious. Okay. Matchmaking accuracy will improve across all ranks, which would lead to a smoother ranked climb and reduce how hard you may swing up and down in rank. While winning games is, is still the most important factor, individual performance will also be accounted for to improve matchmaking at a mortal plus. This should result in better matches at the highest levels. Close games will have smaller effect on your rank ratings, increases and decreases, adjusted our rank rating curve to so climbing or falling should feel less volatile. Updated rank distribution, placements raised to diamond one before it was plat. This should help reduce the grind for our players at the top. Yeah, then there's performance updates, social updates, kill feeds look different. Um, the, uh, the rest kind of doesn't matter. Bugs, small little things, yeah. The rest doesn't matter. But yeah, that was a huge patch. I mean, reading start to finish took me 15 minutes, which is way longer than any patch really does. And I skipped all the little mumbo jumbo at the top of each person. So yeah, that is huge, 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 huge patch. Um, and also the, of course, the agent leaks. A lot of things came through. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you made it all the way to the end, let me know because this was a super long video. Um, make sure to hit that like button, consider subscribing, join the Discord using down below and check the description. I should be streaming today, giving away some VP and doing some viewer games in the new patch. We'll, we'll just play with it, see how it goes. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.